Well, um, thanks very much for joining us today, Jeff. No, it's fine. So we're here talking to Sir Professor Jeff Palmer for our Roots to Roots podcast. We're standing outside uh, LREC's offices here on 4th Street. We're going to be talking about Edinburgh's collection to the slave trade um, and history just in this area around our offices here. Jeff, I was wondering if you could just kind of talk about 4th Street here and the, and the work that you've done to kind of raise awareness about Edinburgh's connections with the, with the slave trade. Well, th thank you very much. It's um, a nice, fresh day it is and, um, uh, in Edinburgh, which is it's rather nice. But what we're going to talk about today is, as you say, Edinburgh connections with the slave trade and slavery I itself. Mm -hmm. Now, the slave trade is, is different from the ending of slavery. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, with Wil Wilberforce and other abolitionists, managed to end the slave trade in 1807 but slavery itself ended in 1838 mm -hmm. so a few years later now the work i've done is to try and raise awareness of this history basically because um, it came to my notice that a lot of the caribbean people have scottish connections in terms of their surnames mm -hmm. and in jamaica telephone directory I think 70% of the names in it, it, the surnames are Scottish. Um, and that may have just been coincidence, but we've now had a, a better look. And what we've found out is that 30% of the slave plantations were owned by Scots. Right. And that Glasgow, especially, and to a great degree at Edinburgh, they have connections with the slavery. And I found that the Scottish people have been very interested in this history. In fact, I've stated it before, that the Scottish people's response um, to this history is why hasn't anybody told them this before? Because it was excluded from the curriculum um, in, in schools in general. So that history is now being pursued by a lot of people. And um, at LREC, which I'm president, <laughs> I'm very delighted <laughs> that it's even arrived <laughs> at um, an equality organisation, probably the primary equality organisation in, in Edinburgh. Now, we're standing um, on Ford Street, which is uh, a street in the new town of Edinburgh. And one wouldn't have imagined, I have been in LREC for many years, over 30 years, and I never knew that 4th Street had anything to do with um, this history. Uh, you know, I thought, yes, Inverness Lodge, um, the estates um, of the Grants or the estates of other people in, in Scotland, but not 4th Street. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the compensation list. In 1833, when slaves were emancipated, that's just before slavery, anybody who owned a slave, and there were 800,000 British slaves in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, anybody who owned a slave was compensated. And, uh, and if you were compensated, your name would be on that list. And uh, London University published that list and I got a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, when I looked at the list, I saw Ford Street. Right. <laughs> and I think what we should now do is to have a look at one or two of the houses on Ford Street and then move on to uh, other areas close by which also have a link with British slavery in the Caribbean. So we're slightly further down 4th Street now, um, outside number 24, um, which is one of the buildings that was on the compensation list. Yes, well 24, um, to my surprise, when I looked at the list, and I thought, this is just down the road from El Rec. Mm -hmm. um, so I came down, had a look, and I was really fascinated by it because it is the only house on this street that has a balcony. Mm -hmm. And it is described, um, I've looked up the details of these buildings, and it says, Fort Street, number 24, iron balcony, it then describes the, the sandstones mm -hmm. and it says that the sandstone is of high quality, um, it's actually polished. Mm -hmm. So that's a sort of a quality criteria. It doesn't say that the other 
sandstones for the other buildings are polished mm -hmm. um, on this side of the road yeah. and you can see that there's a difference that the, the, the stones here mm -hmm. have a marking mm -hmm. and I think that marking is mass produced right. whereas the marking on 24 is hand um, uh, uh, carved yeah. so again we have a difference in quality in that building if you look at the railings um, here mm -hmm. that the railings are mass produced all these are the same mm -hmm. the railings on 24 are different yeah. they I don't know what um, the 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 artistic um, uh, description mm -hmm. <laughs> for the differences yeah. but when you look at the detail that is a batched batch produced whereas these is mass produced right. Right. so that building itself is different mm -hmm. It is on the list and the, uh, when I look at the compensation on that list, mm -hmm. what do you have? You have that the, I think it's the, the person's name is Crawford mm -hmm. and Crawford got over £4,000 for slaves. Mm -hmm. Now £4,000 in today's money is probably about three and a half million. Mm -hmm. So. If these buildings, and I don't know what that cost today, yeah. but let's say it costs about a million pounds to purchase today, you could still purchase that building with your three and a half million and you still have two and a half million left. Yeah. That is two and a half million profit mm -hmm. from slavery. Yeah. And therefore that put into context the kind of money that was made. Mm -hmm. So 24 is very significant. I, 12 is also on the list which is down the road but 12 isn't as distinguished at the front yeah. it is but it is also different. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a pair of houses there's 12 and 12A. Yes that's correct. Yeah. So and that's next to Elric's um, office. Yeah. So time. this street has historical connections which go back to 1833 when the slaves were emancipated. If we're talking about number 24 Fort Street, mm -hmm. this is a, a street that you wouldn't have imagined would have that historical significance. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't imagine it would be on a slave compensation list. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd, we know, for example, there are various estates um, which are on the compensation list. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that there are um, grand houses like Inverness Lodge in Musselburgh, mm -hmm. but for Fort, for Fort Street to be on the compensation list, I think it's remarkable. Well, what it does show is that not only um, illustrious landowners are on the compensation mm -hmm. list, but people who lived in the new town mm -hmm. of Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, were involved in, 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 that, in that slavery. Now if we look at some of the complexities of it, Crawford received that money on behalf of trustees. Mm -hmm. Now what that tells us is that there was an owner, a slave owner, but he must have had trustees to help fund um, his slave business in, in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Now, on the list, it says he got four, over £4,000. What is interesting is that there was a counterclaim. Mm -hmm. And that counterclaim is from a Barrett. And it was from a, 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 a woman. So therefore, what we have is that she could be a relative of the slave owner, mm -hmm. but in fact, it is not the relative who would get that money, it would be the trustees. Right. And what that tells us is attorneys or lawyers were very much involved in slavery right. because slavery was about property, because mm -hmm. the slaves were property, and it was also about how that property is um, divided up and it had to be legal yeah. because the slaves were property and slavery was covered by law. Mm -hmm. 